We're glad to know you're still there. Uh, right now, we're taking our second hot topic. And Ribadu tells the FCC to block funding of terrorism, kidnapping, and banditry. That is what we're looking at. Remember that the Enugu office of the EFCC was launched uh, re uh, recently, and he was giving this admonition there. So we have a guest, uh, Mr. Tokwe Temoko, a legal expert that will be talking to us on the show this morning. Good morning, Tokwe, and welcome to the program. Morisa. Okay. Beach. Yeah. This uh, this mandate, more or less, that has been given by the National Security Advisor uh, to EFCC. Let's let's first of all uh, see how how much EFCC empowered to be able to carry out this block funding of terrorism, kidnapping, banditry. How much powers do the EFCC have? First of all, before we see if they can actually do or carry out this mandate? Sorry, uh, it's actually broken uh, from this end, but to the extent of what I could hear, uh, I think the question was uh, trying to find out how much is EFC empowered to, to carry out the task yeah of uh tackling money laundering and financing of terrorism yeah if i get you right yes you did yes the the legal framework for the task with which the efc started with is, is is already there you know we have been we have been having laws upon laws apart from the efc art itself which actually gave the uh the agency enormous power to tackle uh, some of these infractions mentioned, even without new laws, the FCC Act gave the, the, the agency enormous powers. And in 2022, under President Buhari, three new laws. President Buhari signed three bills into law, you know, that further empowered the EFCC to go after. Serious money laundry act in Nigeria, which is which is at the foundation of financing terrorism in the country, with it is disruptive effect on the economy, you know, and that is the money laundering uh, uh, prevention and Pro prohibition act 2022, terrorism prevention and prohibition act 2022, a process of crime recovery and management act 2022. This this new specialized laws empower the EFCC. There is no, there is no, there is no more power that can be given to anybody, any agency in the whole world to deal with these infractions more than these laws that have been in place. But what principally are lacking, they are not laws. They are not legal framework. You know, even even the, the other criminal code we have ordinarily has empowered the law enforcement agents with powers to deal with some of these crimes. But when we now have specialized crimes in modern society and new laws have emerged, the, the new laws automatically create a body that will make use of that instrument to deal with those actions. But what is lacking, what is principally lacking in the enforcement of these laws is the willpower. There is no consistency. I Ribadu, Ribadu was talking from experience, you know, was the chairman of this body when it was that body, yeah. when ELC was ELC. Yeah. You know? And the glory, the glorious part of that body, Ribadu was part of that history. Yeah. If not one of the principal actors, he was part of that history, you know. So he be saying that the ELC needs to do more in making use of the available legal frameworks to deal with the acts of money laundering and financing terrorism. He knows what he's talking about. As 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 far as Nigeria is concerned, what is That is principally created by National Security Act to deal with issues that brought down with internal security. But when some of these bodies evolve and age with time, they, 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 they tend to be tempted to go outside the scope of their, of their legal framework to the tempting ground of what 
almost destroyed the general Nigerian police. They want to go to deal with those areas that are not the principal destroyer of the economy, that are not the principal destroyer of the country, but those areas that can be materially beneficial to them. That is what took some of these bodies out of their creation to deal with matters, land matters, some civil matters that are clothed, you know, in criminal form, they leave the terrain of their primary assignment. If ELC is consistent, if ELC is courageous, if ELC is determined, and there's a willpower from the government to allow it to function, we have enough, more than enough laws that will allow the ELC to deal with the issue of money laundering and financing of terrorism, even when it cannot be, even when those 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 crimes cannot be uh, cannot be totally eradicated because they are systemic. They will be reduced to barest minimum, but the willpower is not there. So I agree with what the Badu said. He charged the body to go after some of these uh, some of these infractions in order to help the, the, the economy and the country. But one of one of the challenges I've seen in one of the challenges I've seen in security in uh, Nigeria it seems to be sharing of information. And Ribadu went talks to the EFCC. Uh, but I'm sorry, I'm not actually connecting. It was uh, breaking somehow. Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing now. Okay, Ribadu has spoken with EFCC. And we're hoping that they're going to uh, sit up and do what they need to do. But what about the synergy between the C, uh, D, uh, EFCC, the DSS, the Nigeria Police, the Nigeria Army? There seems to be a problem with sharing of information. How do you think the EFCC can achieve this, almost like in isolation? No. Uh, <laughs> the reason why I'm actually connecting with these questions is because I'm a principal actor, you know, in Nigerian projects. I didn't hear most of the, the question, but I know you are talking about synergy between yeah. the AFCC and, all, and the all other bodies. Yeah. Yes, in, in yeah. tackling this uh, this uh, menace of uh, money laundering and, uh, and financing of terrorism. AFCC cannot actually work alone. Specialized agencies. This the duty with which they were scheduled. These are, no, these are no duties that the general Nigerian police can actually deal with. These are, these are assignments over which the general, the general Nigerian police have already failed. You know, but when they are created to deal with that very huge task, there's always a temptation to derail, to go outside the purview of that very huge and tasking, you know, assignment, to, 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 you know, the human, the human, the Nigerian human factor, to where can materially also benefit some of the, some of the personnel of the agency who are entrusted with enforcing this law. Now, when MFLA uh, had his, 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 when he started, you know, they, there was confusion as to which body, which agency, you know, to deal with this matter. The DSS declared him wanted for financing terrorism, you know. The FCC had to call me to investigate financing of terrorism. It's not, it's not, it's not all done, you know. It has a connecting road. There's a connecting road between that and money laundering. And the EFCC that has power to investigate money laundering, you know, can go into the fact of it. That is financing of terrorism. But the DSS, DSS is not primarily empowered to deal with the issue of money laundering. But they have the powers under the act to deal with the issue of financing of terrorism because that borders on the internal security. So if these two bodies do not work together, if these two bodies they see themselves as rivals, then they will be failure. Instead of fighting the common enemy, they will not be fighting each other. You can see what happened. You know, in, uh, in in court, when the MFN was brought to court, two agencies fighting openly. You know, the the, the Nigerian prison uh, authority and the DSS, they were fighting openly in court to take custody of a MFN. But that is not the intention of the law. That is not what the law, the law envisaged synergy 
between these two bodies and all other bodies in order to be able to achieve their aim. Because if the crime is a general crime, the body will not be created. EFCC know that the pol police can deal with financial crimes. Under the, under the, under the law, creating Nigerian police, they can deal with, with financial crime. But because financial crime has become a tradition, it has also be, it has become a swallowing tradition, it has become a culture. Mm -hmm. So there is need for a specialized body that can deal with it. And that is what, you know, before the EFCC, even within Nigerian police structure, there was SFU in those days, special fraud unit, you know, in Lagos. The, the function of FCC today was the function of SFU in those days. But when, when, when uh, the, 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 structure, the structuring of, of this country over time has made it possible for every agency created to grow in age and derail from their primary assignment, the major task that EFCC are busy with today is pursuit of young boys and mm. they also delve into land like that. I'm a lawyer and I, I'm a court. Every day, I know we, we have cases in court in which EFCC has left their primary assignment, particularly in places like Ogun and Lagos, where land is like gold, to delve into land matters. You know, because this is where the gold is. Mm. Whereas the primary assignment that is killing the country, that is bedeviling the country, that is taking us back, it is there. And they have not even, they have not even fulfilled that task. But they go into some of these things because they are easy tasks that are not materially beneficial. When you post into an hotel or, or a private place where you have some of these uh, internet fraudsters, it's an easy job. It's not as difficult as going after money launderers and financiers of terrorism. Those are easy jobs, but they are not materially beneficial because we, there, is no, there is no culture of accountability too. Mm. How do we account? How do we account for the for the for, for recoveries? How do this body account for recoveries? How do they account for what are recovered? You know the process of crime recovered from some of these their their, their special duties. So because there is no culture of accountability, they, they, it is not possible for them not to go into those easy work that are more materially beneficial than works that are risky, that are dangerous, in which vested interests too are there. They are going to confront vested interests, even in government. You know, we can't talk about money laundry. It's not just from some of these, uh, some of these uh, uh, minor things that we have mentioned. They are minor compared to politicians' money laundry. The money being laundered by kidnappers, by, uh, by, 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 by full and nearest militants, you know, by bandits, they are small compared to what politicians have done that, particularly during election time. So how do we have to see okay. take okay, control so, so, of those situations? Okay. Um, Effectively. Yes, sir. So my concern okay. now is um, for this people, right, the people that they're supposed to go after and, you know, track their accounts or, you know, just do their investigations. When they get this people, how do they prosecute them? Or is it just a slap on the wrist and, you know, they move on? Do they face the music? Because if we're saying that we want to kill banditry and kidnapping, we've seen cases where they said they have a list of these people funding terrorism. But why haven't we seen that list? Why is no one being perse persecuted? And even when they find out, do they persecute them that we know of, that the, the, the whole masses know, we name and shame them? Or do they just you know, say, oh, yes, you did this slap on the wrist, you pay some money, and you move on? Well, the, uh, as a legal practitioner who is uh, also a role player you know, in the field, the, the, the prosecutorial sources you know, of this, some of these bodies, particular EFC, still mm. leaves much uh, to, it's not satisfactory. Right. I'm a court every day, and I know that plea bargain has actually taken over, you know, from the normal traditional prosecution of, of criminals and all that and all that. Because every crime must have consequence. But plea bargaining has taken over. Particularly because it is so easy. Those who are truly involved in some of these crimes, it is so easy for them to, to plea bargain. And why do they do that? 
Investigation takes forever in Nigeria. Awaiting trial takes forever in Nigeria. Prosecution takes forever in Nigeria. And okay. so when the, the orientation is there now, in prison, all over the country, even people that commit murder, the first thing they will, they will throw to them, the prison management, you know, those who become their friends over time, they will tell you, you better go and play back game. Because they know that the system, the prison system in Nigeria, is also contributing negatively, you know, towards the success of the work of these people. If it is, if it is in, in a senior society, where investigation takes a very a definite time, prosecution takes a definite time, conviction takes a definite time, prison uh, uh, sentence serving takes a definite time. If you propose a plea bargain to somebody, who, because it is not all of the persons that are taking the custody who actually commit some of these crimes. You know, okay. if, you, if you have proposed plea bargain to somebody who is innocent, he want to face, he want to prove his innocence in court. He want right. to, he want to, he want to, he want to prove. All right, okay. you know, That it's okay. also it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but because of, yeah, 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 because of the property of good tradition in investigation, prosecution, and sentencing, people take to plea bargain, okay. and when they take to plea bargain, it's an easy way out. All right, okay. It's an easy um, way out. Uh, I wish we had well, more time, but, but we do not have much time. Uh, we yeah, have already run out of time. Thank you so much for being a part of our thank program you. this morning. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Merry Christmas, please. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. To you. Uh, yeah. We'll be talking to Tokwe Temokon, a legal expert, and we're talking about the uh, mandate given by the National Security Advisor, um, Ribadu. Uh, he told the EFCC to block funding of terrorism, kidnapping, and banditry. And we're looking at how successful that can be and what the enabling laws are. But this is where we're going to wrap up uh, the program this morning. We're very happy that you were able to stay with us till this moment. Yeah. We'd like to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Yes, we'll be uh, seeing you on Christmas Day. <laughs> on Christmas Day, we'll be here together with you. We're expecting our hampers and our, our rice and, and chicken wines and cakes chickens. and all that. So, mm -hmm. It's going to be a wonderful day. So, happy weekend. Merry Christmas. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Merry Christmas. My name is Verme Paulson. Have a wonderful celebration. Good morning.